Fashion is a fickle business, changing all the time. But scientists are finding that the Aussie body is changing shape almost as fast, and fashion is not keeping up. A cry of discontent is coming up from the women of Australia. They can't get clothes that fit. I just want, you know, the fashionable type of clothes that are in fashion now to actually fit me. It's all for the one figure that's a size 12, size 10. Most of the clothes are like for people that are about the size of the fetus, I think, these days. <laughs> yeah, it gets a bit depressing. Remarkably, the human body is evolving and it's happening over a very short period of time. Fashion and science are now forming an unlikely partnership to find out just how fast we're changing. It all started with award-winning fashion designer Daisy Veach. She started making her own clothes because she could never find anything to fit. Like everybody, initially you think, well, maybe the problem is with me. Maybe, you know, I'm an unusual shape. It was only very much when I became quite experienced as a pattern maker that I started to realise everybody was having the same problems. And with that realisation came, of course, the question, why? She discovered the problem was the measurements used by clothing manufacturers. They're up to 80 years out of date. To make clothes fit people in the 21st century, Daisy needed to know how we've changed. She turned to anatomist Professor Henneberg for help. He's a man who likes to look at bodies. Although he usually looks at dead ones, he suggested they join forces and undertake a serious size survey of living Australian bodies. One, two, nine, zero. So how many people have you had through so far? 762 at the moment, it's, as we speak. That's a, a busy set of tape measures. It is, considering we take 60 measurements on each person. And the bust measurement. So science and fashion have embarked upon a mammoth task to find out just how the Australian body has changed shape since the last survey done in 1926. We've had probably three times the number of people volunteer than we're actually able to measure. So that's, that's how many volunteers. It's been wonderful. So how did you get into this stuff? Professor Henneberg's usual workplace is the human dissection labs at Adelaide University. His motive for the size survey wasn't fashion. It was his fascination with microevolution, the study of changes in the body from generation to generation. Microevolutionists have found that the human body is actually evolving over a remarkably short period of time. Once rare abnormalities are becoming more common, we're growing extra arteries. And this artery should not be there. Six. Our heads are changing shape. A footy ball and a soccer ball. These shapes occur until today in various populations. But this was the average, most common shape in Europe 800 years ago. This is the most common shape in Europe now. Our fingerprints have got more complex. Comparing various generations, we see a change. And the change goes from what is most common to more complex patterns where we have three radii that are double or even triple, like in this case. In fact, our entire bodies are changing shape. So you're seeing some pretty rapid changes in the structure of people. What's driving these changes? Uh, in short, human culture. Change in technology, sanitation, medication, and change in our social organization. This allows us to look better after pregnant mothers. It allows us to save more human lives. Henneberg is hoping the size survey will expand his knowledge of microevolution and the preliminary findings do show Aussies are a unique breed. We're evolving quite differently from our European and American counterparts. Australians are not getting much taller over the last 60 years, but we are getting much heavier and wider. It is fairly different from what happened in Europe or in North America, where over the last century or so, people increased in height about three, four times more than in Australia. 
but they also increased in weight. So now it produces Australians that are about that and that, whereas Europeans are about that and that. And that's a fairly substantial difference. Professor Henneberg thinks intensive farming in Europe and the USA may be to blame for this difference. Growth hormones added to fodder are not completely decomposed by cooking of the meat and therefore they are then ingested by growing young individuals and add or boost their growth. Meanwhile, the fashion industry will take on board these evolutionary findings. Daisy hopes that once the data is processed, women of all shapes and sizes should finally be able to go into a store and come away with their dream dress. What we hope to do with it is we hope to produce mannequins that represent average Australians and we want to produce them in a range of sizes to take into account the, the way a human body changes when it gets fatter. So we'll produce garments that fit much better at the extremes. And that will mean a lot of very happy Australian ladies. Paul Willis there, always trying to please the...